Hello everybody, my name is Sven Vinke, I am the director on Baldur's Gate 3 and I'm going to talk you through today uh, all of the cool things that we've added to BG3 uh, in patch 5. So let's get started. One of the highlights for me of patch 5 is the inclusion of what we call the active role system. Uh, how does it work? Well, it's very simple. Whenever there's a check that pops up, uh, you can actually ask your character to cast a spell to aid fate a little bit. So for instance, here you can see me cast Guidance and that's going to give me a 1 to 4 bonus on the roll that I need to do. But you could also ask one of the other party members in your vicinity to cast a spell to aid your luck a little bit. And like this, you can stack them and that can make a very big difference in gameplay. To give you an example, I was playing the game uh, earlier today and uh, I was uh, accessing the chapel. There's a, a lockpick check that you can do there. And usually that fails because it has a very high uh, DC number. It has a 20, uh, which you need to match. That's very high. Uh, but with the eight of my cleric, uh, Shadowheart, I managed actually to open that door, something that I hadn't managed without cheats in a long time. And so I discovered a completely different way of entering that chapel. And I was very happy to see also that our scripters and the writers had anticipated all of that and I had a completely different entry point to my adventure. So be sure to try out the active role when you download patch 5. You're going to find that it does quite a lot of good things. Hit me! Go! Ah. Uh, hello. Next up is actually a pretty big feature, uh, which is the background roles. When you create a character in the game, you get to pick a background. So you get to be a folk hero, for instance, or a noble. Well, say that you pick folk hero and you do something that a folk hero would do in the game, then the game is going to reward you with an inspiration point or with some experience if you already are at your inspiration cap, which is actually also a new thing. Uh, but you're going to find that there's over a hundred of these goals that were added in the content of early access for you to discover. And every single time you're going to discover one of them, you're going to see them listed up here in this neat, handy background goal uh, UI that was added to the game. It rises from the stone hanging in the air in silent offering. Something that you have been asking us for and something that we actually were planning for quite some time is the ability to free Shadowheart in the tutorial. Uh, in the past you couldn't free her, but now you can. You don't have to, it's up to you what you do with it, but you can free her and you'll notice that that introduced a whole bunch of new permutations to the story as you'll try out to play the early access content. You're alive. We also added something that was also a very big community ask and which took quite some effort to do because we're trying to do it right. Uh, it is what we call the point and click system. It's very simple. Whenever you're going to click somewhere, your uh, characters are now going to say something just like they did in the original games. Uh, so for instance, if I ask Shadowheart to walk somewhere, she'll say this. I must keep going. But if I ask her to go into sneak mode, she'll say this. Unseen as I was taught. Now the really cool part about this is that they will change what they say in function of where you are in the story and where you are on their character arcs, depending on what decisions you made. Uh, for early access alone, we actually recorded for each of them over 800 uh, voice bars. And we're going to be recording much more as we finish, obviously, the entire thing. Need to keep focused. Uh, by popular demand, we split up the uh, jump and disengage. This was in the past uh, jumping equaled disengaging. Now we have a separate disengage action and jump its own uh, thing. Uh, and this is popular demand also from the community. Uh, you can now break concentration. There's a little uh, icon there that you can click on whenever a character is concentrated if you want to break their concentration. If you're a pacifist player, you don't necessarily need to kill everybody anymore. Uh, you can just toggle the uh, non-lethal attacks. If you then start smacking them, you're going to knock them unconscious. So you can still rob them blind, but you don't have to kill them. It's better for your karma. Mini camps, mini camps, mini camps is super cool. Okay, so mini camps is essentially the feature that uh, when you go to sleep somewhere, the background setting of your camp is going to match the place where you go to sleep. Remember how in the past when you go to sleep you were always in the wilderness, always with a forest background? Well, no more, because if you now go to sleep into the Underdark, you're going to be in the Underdark. If you go to sleep into the chapel, you're going to be in the chapel. You go to sleep in the cavern, guess what? You're going to be in the cavern. It's fantastic. It really adds a lot to the immersion of your adventure. It took a lot of work because we had to modify all of the cinematics to be able to take place wherever you were but it was definitely worth it. So it adds a lot uh, to the gameplay. 
You did it. You're channeling the weave. Speaking of camp again, uh, there's a couple of extra cinematics that you'll find in camp. Uh, definitely check out uh, Scratch and the Owlbear if you ever figure out how you can get and the dog and the Owlbear cub into your camp. It's possible. Uh, then you're going to have a very adorable scene as uh, Baldur's Gate 3 continues to improve its pet simulating skills. Uh, we've added a new feature that we want to try out during early access and it's called camp resources. So uh, what it means, if you go to sleep now, uh, you're going to be asked what you want to eat. And if you eat sufficient, you're going to have a very fruitful rest and you're going to restore all of your spell slots and all of your HP if you are, for instance, a wizard. However, if you don't have enough supplies, you will have what we call a shallow rest and you're going to be able to restore everything. The reason we did it is because we want to differentiate stronger between short rest and long rest. And so we're very curious to see how it's going to play for you. So do let us know what you think of our camp supplies system. It definitely adds a lot to finding food in the world. And uh, you will notice that as you continue playing the game, uh, the uh, cost of uh, going to rest is going to increase uh, as you level up. Uh, and that actually reflects the, the, the growing upkeep of your ever increasing uh, camp in the game. So very curious to see uh, what you're going to do with that. And we'll fill your front with arrows. Or you turn around and your backside gets the same treatment. A strange symbol glows, marked on their flesh, and something within you stirs in response. And there is a lot more. Now, I'm not gonna go through the list of everything. Uh, there's just too much. Uh, but I do wanna share a story uh, with you of how uh, this patch changed my own gameplay experience, and I was really happy with what I saw. Uh, so, I uh, already mentioned to you that uh, using my active role, I actually managed to open that chapel door, something which I hadn't done in a long time. Uh, so, I went inside, and as I went inside, uh, I had uh, some traps to deal with, and I had a little fight that I needed to do. And then I went to sleep, and uh, as I went to sleep, I had enough supplies, so I ate my supplies. Uh, and I was super happy to see that I was actually standing inside of the chapel as I went uh, to sleep rather than being in that wilderness. It just felt right. And then when I walked outside of the chapel and I surprised those bandits that are there, something that you usually don't see because typically you would go from the other side and just meet the bandits in their normal default script setting. Uh, they reacted to it. Uh, I saw a scene that I hadn't seen in a long time. There was a guy yelling at me, hey, somebody's coming out of the crypt. And I was feeling like, hey, this is how it should be. It's a small thing, but it was important to me. So I wanted to share it with you because this is uh, essentially the incremental nature of development. Things are starting to come together. And as they're starting to come together, we can start seeing the light at the end of the tunnel of development where the game eventually is going to be released, hopefully somewhere in 22. Uh, that's it for me today. Uh I can read your mind. I know what you are thinking. Where the hell is he? Why is he wearing a different shirt? Why did his face change? Did his hair change? Well, as it turns out, uh, we forgot to record the outro to our little update. And that's why we decided to record a new one here at the Ravenstein in Ghent uh, as we are preparing for Panel from Hell number three. Uh, before I go and I say goodbye, uh, I wanted to let you know also we are already hard at work on patch 6 so that's be going to be coming faster than you think and uh, of course we are also hard at work on finishing the entire game. That's going to take a little bit longer but it is going to come eventually and when it's going to come it's going to be I think pretty good. Alright, thank you very much for watching, take care everybody, until next time, bye bye!